So lesson two of the tsunami unit has students working with tsunami data using the Tuva Labs interface. Depending on how well prepared your students are to work with data, some students may be able to do this independently, uh, but likely, especially if you're teaching this in sixth grade, the students are gonna need a bit of assistance, at least with the first graph. They will not be using many of the functions in this Tuva interface. So even though there's lots of words and icons on here, uh, this will be their first time to see this interface for OpenSciEd, and so they're just going to be using a couple of options. Um, so let me orient you to the interface. So this mixed up cases can be edited by the students as they work and build graphs. This is where they'll want to put a title to the graph. So uh, instead of mixed up cases, they might say, how does earthquake magnitude affect tsunami wave height. So they'll title their graph so that they know what they're working with. Uh, the handout that goes along with Tuva scaffolds this process for students where they think about uh, which variable is going to be on which axis. So they'll actually complete the sentence, how does blank affect blank? Um, and it tells them that the first variable is going to be on the x-axis and the second variable will be on the y-axis. This is a great teaching moment if they've been working in any kind of statistics or math class around scatter plots and graphing and variables. Uh, they can actually really work through what's an independent variable and what's a dependent variable. But you may have to do this with them the first time and that's okay for this unit. Um, so when you get to Tuba and you want to actually build a graph, if you've completed the sentence, how does earthquake magnitude affect tsunami wave height, you'll want to click magnitude over to the x-axis. And you'll see all the cases of tsunamis since 1900 start to move. So you'll see it just um, gives you a histogram of those cases. But now you want to look at how that affects wave height. So you'll click the tsunami wave height and put it on the y-axis. And now it actually shows you a pattern around how the magnitude of the earthquake affects the wave height. So this isn't going to be a clear linear pattern. And in order to help your students, you might consider questions like, what are some of the highest wave heights? What was the magnitude that went with that tsunami? So for example, you could select um, one of these cases up here and it tells you that the wave height was 32 meters and the earthquake magnitude was 7.7. .7. So the students can kind of click on the cases and get a little bit more information. But in general, what they'll want to notice is the larger tsunamis are happening with higher magnitude earthquakes and that the low magnitude earthquakes generate much smaller wave heights in general. It also means that some of the high magnitude earthquakes also have um, some low wave heights. The one thing I'll point out is that we also have out of the whole data set of over a thousand tsunamis since 1900, there's 467 cases with missing values. And this is because in, earlier, in the earlier part of the data set, there wasn't as much monitoring of all the different variables. And so the data set's been pulled together from as much information as possible, but some of the data is still missing. So when they're ready to build their next graph, how does earthquake depth affect tsunami wave height? The first thing they'll need to do is click the X next to the variables and those, that information will go away and they will start with a fresh graph. So really all you need to know for this activity is to drag the different variables on the side over to the X and Y axis they're not going to be using the color by attribute option on the right hand side of the graph for this. Um, they also do not have to have a line of least squares drawn because that is likely above the grade level for their math. But it is an option if they want to see a line of best fit in the data. A couple of other things that they can do while they're in here is uh, look at the causes of tsunamis. So they've been actually um, figuring out from the maps what causes the most tsunamis. And so they can actually check their thinking around this. 
and they'll see that yes, earthquakes cause a whole lot of tsunamis. Landslides and volcanoes can cause them too, but just not as many. So that's another thing that they can do here if they're interested. Um, and then the final thing I'll say is that they can also, these are um, dots, but they can click the map button because latitude and longitude is here. And it will actually build out, they would have to drag longitude and latitude onto the map, but it will actually build out a map of all the tsunamis since 1900 if that's something that they want to see. But of course they've been looking at maps and so they might uh, not want to do this. There may not be time for this. So I hope this video helps orient you to the tsunami data set. There's instructions for the student to do this as well um, and let them have a little bit of fun with it. But the big idea is that they need to look at general patterns between the magnitude and depth of the earthquake and the tsunami wave height.